coach, maybe an adult would step in and say something, but nothing, not a word. It was like a wall of silence. Nobody was talking. The girl wasn't talking, and the other kids, it was like, no big deal. Monday rolled around, and it was like nothing had happened. Scene 16, the chorus of good kids. I am Taylor Elizabeth Clayman. I am a theater and Spanish major at the University of Iowa with a writing certificate. Uh, I came into the university for writing, so I was going to be an English major, or I was for a year. Um, and the theater department I just kind of added on because I was like, I didn't quite get to delve into the theater world enough in high school. So I thought it would be just like a nice extra major. But then um, it kind of took precedence in my life and I switched things up so that way theater and Spanish were what I could focus my studies on and writing would be the certificate that kind of underlined all of it. And with theater you've also had on stage, off stage, writing, directing. Yeah. And how many more opportunities would, did it, that catch you off guard? Were you surprised you got that many opportunities? Well, our theater department is pretty comprehensive in the education they offer. So they, they want you to have all studies. You, you definitely, there are the core classes that you have to take. And then you get to choose the all of the electives. So I um, was su surprised briefly when they mentioned that we had to do like backstage production hours but um, it makes sense um, so that that was a fun experience I did that this summer the second half where I got to um, be crew chief leader in the costume crew and otherwise I was I guess surprised how easy it was to take up a position as a director within the department um, my first was a 10-minute play during the 10-minute festival where like the director of the play that I had just acted in earlier that semester asked me, hey, do you want to direct a 10-minute play? We need directors. And I was like, uh, sure. I'm interested, but I don't, I don't know how, but sure. And then um, I realized that I, it's, it's like being a playwright. You make the decisions about the play. And then I realized as I was directing this and as I was writing my new play, or my I guess my first play at the theater department that, hey, I over direct in my play writing. Like I write what I expect the stage to be like and all these things. So just um, my first year, first and second year at the university in their department helped me to kind of realize the different positions I wanted to take in the theater. And so I was able to separate those and learn, like, as a director, I should do this. And as a writer, I should do this. And then this also led you to Argentina. Mm -hmm. what, what did you do there? How did that come about? Uh, so Argentina was kind of a spur of the moment. Like, I knew I wanted to study abroad. Um, I chose that from my first year entering. I was like, all right, I'm going to learn Spanish. I'm going to study abroad at some point. And I spent all of my first year like thinking, what can I do? But I knew since in the curriculum there are certain years that you should study abroad because you can't really do it in your first years. Um, so I had to wait. I couldn't do anything for like a year and a half. And then when I finally could choose my country, I had no idea where I wanted to go. And I was watching Dexter, um, the serial killer show. And in the eighth season, they briefly mentioned Argentina as sort of a subplot for their getaway. And I was like, you know what? I'll do that one. <laughs> so, and then I looked into it, and Argentina has a really strong um, theater subculture. Or it's like, um, it's theater of the people, Teatro del Pueblo, but it also is like new age theater. It's, it's affordable, but it is underground, if that makes sense. Um, so I went to Argentina uh, July 21st, 2016, and I was there till December 2016, uh, where I got to intern, kind of, uh, with like three different directors, um, where I just kind of would sit in on their rehearsals, or um, with the other director, I got to go to her acting classes, which were in Castellano, and I once partook in the cl acting class. That was an experience. I was like, I don't know if I can act in Spanish, but we're going to try this. Um, and the third director I did not realize was going to be an erotic film d 
director, but that was a story of its own. My friend told me, I have a director that I want you to meet. Like, he can, like you say you want to be an actress, he can help you out. And so I set up this meeting as if, like, I'm going to meet, like, a serious director, like someone in theater or someone in film. What I didn't realize it was erotic film. So when I got there, and, like, he's talking, and, like, you have to acknowledge I don't, I, at this point in my language development, like, I knew what was going on, but I also was like, oh, yeah, yeah. So, so I get there, and um, he's, like, telling me all these things. He gives me, showing me his office. He gives me a movie that's called uh, Wings of Desire. It's an old German film, but it was in, with Spanish subtitles. So I have that in my room. But I, at this point, I still thought, oh, he's a writer and a director. Like, I didn't even know what medium he was in. And then when I go to their, um, like, production place, and uh, he leads me through the doors, and then I was about to, like, watch them do filming, was not ready for there to be naked people on silks. And I was like, oh, oh, so that's... I think you win. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, but then it turned out, like, I didn't, I don't know. I learned that the... That kind of helped me with my play, not that the, the erotic film is anything like prostitution, but it wasn't gritty, it wasn't like porn, I suppose. It was just this writer who was enriched with the idea of making love stories that also involved like carnal desire, and then he, I would translate those stories for him. Um, I would listen to <laughs> the episodes and then write down everything in Spanish, and then I would translate it from Spanish to English, and I would sit with um, the producer's son, and he would sometimes just make sure I was actually listening to the right words. <laughs> so, I don't know, it was kind of just kind of stumbling through the world and finding things. <laughs> and then how, how did you handle the whole, the language barrier? It's, it's hard to imagine what that's gotta be like yeah. And everything's different. Yeah, it was, it was difficult at first, but it was... I was lucky that I got to study Spanish for four years in high school, which, to be fair, was not adequate preparation because high school four years is equivalent to, like, two years in college. So, <laughs> um, but then I was able to study two more years in college, and even though I didn't even feel prepared to do... to live in another country for six months, the program that I picked allowed me to kind of be coddled, but n still pushed me forward. So I set up the internships independently from the program. The program was just classes, and um, they tested our, our speaking and our writing and our listening skills at the beginning, and then they put us in the classes they thought were our level. Um, but I set up the internships outside of all of that. It had nothing to do with the program. So it was more like me just jumping in the water. I had. Uh, it was, for the first half of the semester, I went to plays, and most of the, most of the plays, I didn't understand 60% of what was going on. I think like, I was watching it, I was like, oh, this is interesting. Uh, but <laughs> I don't know what the dialogue is. <laughs> They're speaking so quickly, and it's like English, where a lot of Americans at least speak kind of closed mouth, and it's, it, for second language English speakers, they don't, they find American English difficult because they talk like this all the time and they don't, they can't read our lips. Um, so that was what Castellano was like. And they, they have a different accent than everyone else. They, they go mishamo rather than meyamo. So you're trying to understand when it would have a double L or a Y, but you're also like trying to keep up with their closed mouth and just like, Ugh. but um, it, just after a couple weeks, it clicks in and you when you make friends that speak only that language it kind of pushes you forward and just keep doing cultural things and then because theater is is such a personal level and universal it's been around for thousands of years does that make that barrier easier to conquer it depends on the theater um i well at least for argentina i found their theater affordable it was like 10 bucks and I think theater around here is like, if you go to a community theater, it could be up to 30 bucks, right? Um, for them, 180 pesos or 160 pesos, it's not, it's not that much. Like, they'll spend it. And um, 
So yeah, I think it made the barrier easier because you can see the action on stage, but it really depended on the genre of theater. Like I watched a production of Othello, but it was new. <laughs> it was like a, a revamped production of Othello, so they were all in like business suits. And I knew it was supposed to be Othello, but I, I'd never seen Othello before. So I was like, I kind of know the story. I know who Desdemona is. But this is a lot of bloodshed, so <laughs> um, I don't know. And I was going to ask about that, because it's Shakespeare. Mm -hmm. I mean, you'd think Shakespeare seems to be able to translate to any language. Yeah, I think uh, it depends on what they're like, because I can't remember who the playwright is, but I researched it beforehand. And there was a playwright who I think was like in a European country and he just sailed on a boat and he landed in Argentina and he's what shaped current theater, right? Um, it was around, I think he was around the time of like Strindberg and stuff, but he wasn't Strindberg. So it's kind of like, to me their theater had a Brechtian feel, but it was also really grounded. It wasn't like the elements overtook the stage. It was, um, a lot about the dialogue and the action, um, but it it had a very new age feel to it. And then dealing with theater in an entirely different culture than coming back to the United States, you jumped in feet first. Well, again, our, our department's pretty small. Like, so all of the productions that I went to had like 60, I think the biggest production maybe had 200 seats in it. So a lot of the theaters that I saw in Buenos Aires were small, so it, it already was like a close feel. And then coming back to the University of Iowa, our our theaters aren't that big, so it, it wasn't overwhelming, and our, our department's so small that it, it, it almost felt like the next step to be able to think, all right, so I just came from a country where I didn't know half the language, but I was still trying to do things and trying to reach out to people. Now I can go to my own country where I know the language and I can make easier connections. Where I set up an independent study with my Spanish professor and she was gonna have me assistant direct her Spanish play that she wrote the year beforehand. And um, she ended up like seeing kind of the position of knowledge I had in direction and she bumped me up to co-director. And then I was a lot more involved but it was like, I was able to leave a Spanish wor speaking world, come into an English speaking world. Still not sure of how to direct people in Spanish, but kind of fumble through it um, while having the support of the department. Not that they were involved in that production, but I was able to learn the things that our department teaches us. <laughs> Is it a big change when, to go from the type of storytelling on stage to the type of storytelling on film? How, do you have to approach that completely differently because it's a different medium? I guess for me, I, I kind of, I, I don't assume that I know anything because my first medium was fiction writing. I came into the University of Iowa thinking I'm going to be a fiction writer, and while I still consider myself a fiction writer, what I've realized is that our country tends to label people really quickly, like Hemingway, well, even, that's a poor example, but like, so you're only going to be a fiction writer, you're only going to be a screenwriter, like what do you do, right? What are you? But it's, it's not that difficult to just kind of bleed into other categories. For, to go from fiction writing to playwriting, I realized I just have a, a narrative-based playwriting and it helps me to build stories. And then it's it, what I, I just taught myself how to communicate better through the words. And then it was where now my dialogue is rich and I'm entering screenwriting. And so my screenwriting has a lot of like description, but the dialogue is necessary, as necessary as playwriting requires dialogue to be. So I think they feed into each other. The, I'm still unsure of how to direct in film because I just, I don't know that much about like the equipment, but I'm willing to learn and it excites me to, to go into a new medium. With some, what about you? Atraxia. 
It's a small town along the coast. The only people who have heard of Atrexia are from Atrexia. Coast. So, this is just a regular day of the week for you. <laughs> Sounds about right. Don't worry, I've had my shots. Oh goodness. Medium. With songwriting, I it made me nervous because poetry scares me. Like, I've done it before, but I find my poetry kind of bland, and I think songwriting is just poetry. And for me, since I can't play an instrument yet, I'm just kind of, like, I, I have a couple instruments, but I haven't done very well with them. I can't base my songwriting in sound, whereas my friends base their songwriting, they start with the music, and then they express their thoughts, whereas I write a story in my song, and then I say, here, make music for this. So it's, uh, I guess moral of the story for me is I think people can do, people can bleed, people can, can push the boundaries and it doesn't really affect anything except the way that they express their art. And from doing so many different things with films and is, is there a personal goal that you have that you want what do you want the person who's watching your film or your play? I think I approach different mediums differently. So for, for theater, my first couple plays are very, not spectacle based, but the themes are strong. Like I have a theme that I want to express and things might be crazy within the world of the play, but I am going to, like the audience can interpret what I have but this is just gonna land on their lap and I, I don't mind overwhelming people. Um, with screenwriting, I'm not sure where I'm at yet. I, haven't, I have a screenplay that I'm only halfway through and I think it's more about um, the relationships built within the world, at least for what I have. And what, what will you do next? You have a play coming up in a couple months at University Theaters. Yeah. Which you're you're taking on full bore on that one. I'm so excited. I um I I think the best advice that I learned was I used to pen pal Christopher Pellini when I in like eighth grade and he would write me back every like it, it would go for like, oh, he wrote me back in two months and then he started getting more popular and then like a year later I get a letter back. But he still does, like almost every time. So he once, in my early letters, um, I like asked him about writing and he told me, you have to balance feeling like you are the worst writer in the world and feeling like you are the best writer in the world. And so that's how I've been approaching any of the art mediums. I'm timid enough to think this is not the greatest thing, but also you have to push forward and create context like you do. So with my play, I was like, yes, I wrote a full play. And they, um, I've like sent it to everyone and then I get feedback and I'm like, well, why did the university even accept this? This is like the shittiest thing in the world. But I guess, uh, but with the director that I have for my play, he has been pushing me towards rewrites and it's just created something entirely new but the same and it's, it's really amazing what it's come to. And now he's having, um, just today, he asked me to direct his play in December. So that's another thing. Um, so what, what was the question? That, that what do I do next? Yeah. Just, just uh, directing. So opportunities. Just, I think, kind of treading slowly and mm -hmm. feeling and experiencing as much as I can. Um, I was just in your film. And that was its own world. And now I'm starting a new film, um, slowly. It's not quite as quick as production, but it's um, building. And then I am assistant directing my friend's film. Um, in the fall, we're doing my play. That's going to be on stage. And then I'll be uh, directing my other friend's play. So it's like just setting up these opportunities so I can learn artistically, but acknowledging that this is all a learning process. She thought everything. There's the story that Mary you Sue tell about is a me. good kid. And then there's the story you tell about yourself. There's what you believe. My little Johnny would never do something what like that. You want that. to believe. 